the Johnson Wax Program, Words at War, with Clifton Fadiman. The makers of Johnson's Wax for home and industry, in cooperation with the Council on Books in Wartime, proudly presents one of the most widely discussed programs in America, Words at War, dramatizations of the most representative books to come out of this great world conflict. And pinch-hitting for Carl Van Doren tonight is that good judge of fine books, man of letters, and nationally known radio personality, Mr. Clifton Fadiman. Mr. Fadiman. Traveler from Tokyo, which we talked about last week, has been postponed to a later date in the series. Tonight, we tell the story of two people. Did you ever hear of two young people named George Dodd and Ruth Lehman? No, I thought not. They're not very important people in this great war, actually. And yet I think you'll be interested in their story. Because in another way, the same thing might have happened to you. But more about the story and the author in a minute. First, a message from Jack Costello. Folks, we had such a nice letter from a very young lady this week. She writes, I heard Harlow Wilcox tell about all the uses of your wax. So this morning I had Mother polish my brown shoes with Johnson's wax. The wax took off all the black marks and scratches and made my shoes look so bright I thought I would tell you about it. My mother says Johnson's wax is better than shoe polish. I'm five and a half years old and in the high kindergarten." with love. Now, isn't that a nice letter? I could tell that young lady many thousands of people use Johnson's wax on their shoes and on all their leather things like luggage, golf bags, and briefcases. The wax helps to keep the leather from drying out, protects it from wear, besides giving it a nice polish. It's the same Johnson's wax, paste or liquid, that you use on your floors, furniture, and woodwork. Mr. Fadiman? Tonight, Words at War brings you a dramatization based upon Lost Island, written by James Norman Hall. Mr. Hall, as you remember, was one of the authors of Mutiny on the Bounty. As for Lost Island, well, picture the most beautiful island you've ever dreamed about. Imagine a tropical masterpiece of green shrubs, coconut palms, and brilliantly colored flowers, highlighted by still water lagoons. Here, if you can, the giant breakers rolling up on the snow-white beach. Dream of peace, loveliness. Heaven on Earth. Well, that was FBR-9, the island to which Major George Dodd was assigned. The swellest assignment a man could ask for. That's what he thought, anyway, the day he picked up his orders in the colonel's office. Major Dodd? Yes, sir. Actually, your job is quite simple. You're to turn that island into an air base. You're an engineer. You'll know what to do. Examine your ground carefully. Draw up a full-scale map showing where hangars, repair shops, runways, fuel storage tanks, and living quarters should be built. Yes, sir. The plane will get you to the island on the 9th. The ship bringing troops and equipment will arrive on the 19th. That gives you 10 days to do your job. I needn't remind you how important this repairing base is to our Pacific lifeline. Let nothing stand in the way. I won't, sir. Well, time short. Do you have any questions, Major? Well, no, Colonel. Oh, by the way, are there any people on the island? No, none as far as I know. Some natives, I guess. Oh, one man in particular will be expecting you. His name's Vigo. Works for the owner of the island. Sort of foreman or caretaker. Vigo. I've got that, sir. Well, good luck, Major. And uh, happy landings. Thank you, sir. As soon as I saw the island, I realized how lucky I'd been to be chosen for this job. I didn't know then, you see, what the next ten days would bring. I didn't even begin to suspect until I met some of the people. I am Vigo, Major Dodd. Vigo? You? I thought... You thought I was a native? 
You see, although my mother was Polynesian, my father was Danish. Oh, I see. Well, hello. How do you do? I'm glad to know you. <laughs> Welcome to our island. Thank you. We are glad you come. I work for you now like I work for Mr. Boyle. But he is an old man now, sick. Maybe that is why he go to America and sell the island to you? Well, he didn't sell the island, Vigo. He leased it. And not to me, but to the United States. Sell it, States. lease it. No difference, no difference. You like it so much, you stay. Wait and see. Yeah, well, you don't understand. I'm a soldier in the United States Army. That is good. Have you ever eaten a mango, Major Dodd? A mango? Uh, no. Uh, look, Vigo, America has leased your island because they need it to help fight a war. That's why I'm here. I, well, I work for America, see? Like I work for Mr. Boyle? Well, yes, that's right. You, you like your work? <laughs> well, well, sure. That is nice. Major Dodd, you will come see my turtles down on the beach, my baby turtles. Every 75 days, they hatch. Soon it will be 75 days. Then they hatch. You come see them, Major Dodd? <laughs> Yes, yeah, sure, Vigo. I come see your turtles. And then there was Father Vincent, a magnificent-looking old gentleman with a long white beard and snowy white hair. Welcome to our home, my son. Thank you. And while you're here, I hope you'll feel free to visit my little church whenever you wish, and my garden. You must visit my garden. Oh, thank you, sir. But what I wanted to say was... Do you know the found... jam fruit tree? The jam fruit tree? Yes. We have several. Three, to be exact. But, of course, my pride and joy is the orange tree. Uh, the children love it, too. They watch over it like little guardian angels. Uh, you must come and see my garden, Major Dodd. Do come and see the garden. There was Father Vincent. And Vigo, and there was... How do you do, Major Dodd? I... Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> My name is Ruth Lehman. I did not mean to startle you. Well, it's just that I didn't expect... It. Ruth Lehman? Yes. Would you mind telling me how you... Came to this island? Yes. I, I didn't expect to see anyone, so... So... Like you, here, Miss Lehman. My father and I came over a year ago. We're refugees, Major Dodd, German I refugees. See. We had traveled many miles through many, many countries, and finally, somehow, we landed here. And... You like it here? Like it? Major, can you know what it means to come to a strange place and find yourself surrounded by love and kindness? I'll say very simply, this island is heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. I was beginning to feel that way, too. Already I had a curious sense of peace and well-being. For the first time in my life, I'd met a group of people who seemed completely free of fear and its companion, distrust. I was happy. And then slowly, very slowly, it began to happen. Late that afternoon, I made a tour of the entire island with Ruth and Vigo... Naturally, our first stop was Vigo's turtle bed. There they are, Major Dodd. Where? Oh, careful, careful. You almost stepped on it. Well, where? I don't, I don't see anything, Vigo. Do not move, do not move. You see that little bump in the sand before your feet? Uh, yes, I see it. My turtles. But, no, you mean they're under the sand? Certainly. Well, that doesn't make sense. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It makes sense. They are here. But they are not here yet. Oh. Vigo means they have not hatched, and the eggs are still buried oh, in the Vigo. sand. You're nothing but an old fraud. You led me to believe there were turtles here. There are, right under that bunk. Oh. Vigo believes, Major, that a turtle egg naturally winds up as a turtle. You see, there's nothing here to stop it. It's inevitable. Sure. I see. Well, that sounds reasonable enough. Actually, there's nothing that could stop it when you get... What's the matter? Uh, nothing. Oh, nothing. Tell me, Miss Lehman, uh, hmm? do you happen to know just how long this island is? I don't know exactly. About three miles, isn't it, Vigo? Three, three miles. Huh? How wide? I do not know. About two 
Why? I just wonder. Excuse me, Miss yes. Ruth, but we promised Father Vincent we bring Major Dodd to services. I think we better hurry if we expect to catch blessing today and stop at Council Hall, too. Oh, yes, that's right, Vigo. Are you coming, Major? Yes, yes, of course. Here it is, Major, our Council Hall. That's nice. Where? <laughs> well, you see, we hold our meetings out here under the trees, Major. This, too. Celebrations. Everything. For hundreds of years now, my people, on my mother's side of me, have sat out under these very trees and decided important things. Our whole history has been held by these trees, Major Dunn. This grove is very dear to the islanders, Major. It is like your Plymouth Rock mm -hmm. or your Liberty Bell. Mm -hmm. The trees are so close together. There's no room. There just isn't enough room. Oh, we better go now. We better go quick. Church service is starting. Yes. And if we're late, blessings do not take so good. All right. I knelt in the back of the little church and watched Father Vincent and what seemed like the entire population of the island perform the simple and beautiful religious ceremony. I knelt there and watched them and prayed to God for strength. I hadn't prayed in years, but I did then. I asked God to help me find a way. Find some way. After the ceremony was over, I spoke to Father Vincent. He walked through his garden, and the kindly old man said the one thing I feared most. You have seen the whole of our island, my son. What do you think of it? Well, it's beautiful, Father, but... But is something wrong with it? Something you don't like? Oh, no, Father. It's just that... Just that it's so... So what, my son? It's so small. Well, people aren't very large either, are they? <laughs> no, but... Oh, what's the use? Come now, look at the garden. It's taken me 30 years to make this major. 30 years? Well, why are you so startled? It often takes a long time, my boy, to make something beautiful. But it doesn't matter. My garden will last a long time, too. Long after I'm gone, it will be here. Uh, I like to think about that. I'm happy to have something to give to my people here. They've given me so much. Yes, Father. Ah, here comes Ruth. Ah, good oh. afternoon, my child. Good afternoon, Ruth. Father Major. Father Vigo is looking for you. Oh, well, I'll go find him then. Would you be good enough to escort the Major through the garden for me? Oh, yes, Father, fine. I should be glad to. Well, I'm a little worried about the orange tree. The children would be heartbroken. If, uh, well, I'd like to consult Vigo about it. And he wants to consult you about his turtles. He is afraid they won't hatch on time. <laughs> well, a fair exchange. <laughs> I leave you in good hands, my son. I'll my... take care of him, Father. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, my children. This way, Major. The summer house is right over here. Right. Here we are. Won't you sit down? Thank you. No. Sometimes I believe... This is the loveliest spot on the entire island. So utterly peaceful. Won't you tell me? Hmm? I beg your pardon? How bad is it? I don't understand. I think you do. Oh, uh... You forget, Major, I am a refugee from Germany. I have seen these things many times before. Is it so bad? It's hopeless. Are you sure? Sure, of course I'm sure. But isn't there some way... Well, I have my orders, Ruth. Nothing must get in the way. The ship bringing the men and the equipment will be here on the 19th. I know, but surely something can be saved. Well, it's hopeless, I tell you. Every inch will be needed. I've been over and over it in my mind. The island's too small. I can't help it, but it's too small. And that means? It means that no place in the world is safe from war. Not even here. It means that everything, the village, Vigo's turtles, the church, Father Vincent's garden, the council hall, the entire island, everything will be completely wiped out.
This is Clifton Fadiman, and this is the Johnson Wax Program, Words at War, bringing you a dramatization based on the book Lost Island. Lost Island is the story of how war comes to a South Sea Island paradise in the person of Major George Dodd, an engineer in the United States Army. We've seen how Dodd, in fighting the great battle against the common enemy, finds himself fighting another battle within himself, the soldier against the man. For nine whole days now, working day and night, he's been trying to do the soldier's job, that of building an air base his country badly needs. And at the same time, he's been trying to fulfill the man's desire, that of saving the homes of the peace-loving islanders. He tries to do both, but in his heart he knows only one can be done. Oh? George, may I come in? Oh, yes. Come on in, Ruth. Hey, listen. Hmm? I thought of something. I've got the figures here. Yes. You see, if we build the repair shops here, right in the center... Oh. If we build them here, then maybe we could save this. Uh, no way. Oh, nuts. George. No use kidding myself. What good are wishes and prayers when it's slide rules and figures that count? When we get through with those bulldozers, there won't be one square foot of ground left over on the whole island. Why didn't they send somebody else? Why didn't they send anybody else to do this job? I can't do it, Ruth. I can't do it. You can, George. And the time has come for you to tell the people. Tell the people? No. You must tell them. No, I can't, Ruth. I can't. You must, George. The ship is coming tomorrow and their paradise will be destroyed. Tonight in the ceremony... Of an age-old feast, they will welcome you into their island family. You must tell them, George. You must keep faith with them. All right, Ruth. I'll be told. Tonight I'll tell them that the friend they welcomed has come to destroy them. Tonight I'll tell them about the troop ship. I wonder what my little welcome party will turn into then. <laughs> That night, with Ruth by my side, I stood and waited for Vigo to tell the islanders of the ship's coming and what it meant. I'd wanted Father Vincent to tell them, but he'd been called away to another island to perform the last rites of his church for a dying old woman. I stood there and listened as Vigo spoke to them. I don't know how he said it. I couldn't understand his words. But the sound of them will stay with me as long as I live. How would they take it, these friendly, simple people? What would they do? I didn't know. All I could do was stand there and listen. Vigo! Vigo, what's happening? Why are they laughing? They, they are happy. They laugh. They do not understand. Well, why don't they? Why? No ship has come here in ten years. They love a ship to come. They love it. They think it will bring them sewing machines and brass beds. Vigo, you've got to tell them it's not a trading ship. It's a troop ship. A troop ship. I told them. I told them that. But my people do not understand. Why not? They do not know what troops are, Major Dodd. I groped my way past the excited, laughing natives. <laughs> they were so happy. They flung their arms around me, patted me on the shoulder. Some of them even grabbed my hand and kissed it. I ran blindly away from the council hall. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know what I was doing. I must have walked for hours. Finally, I found myself down on the beach. I stood there on the coral sand, where Vigo's little turtles were waiting to be crushed by the wheels of the bulldozers. I stood there and watched the waves roll in. Then, she came. Ruth. Yes, George, I'm here. Ruth, I... No, no, no. It's all right, don't worry. You must not feel this way, George. You must not blame yourself. You had to do this thing. There there are times when men must be ruthless so that good can come of it. It it is like... Yes, George, it, it is like a surgeon who has to cut an arm off in order to save the man. You need the Pacific bases in order to destroy the fascists. Because only then... 
can all men live in their homes free from fear and persecution? These poor people will suffer. I know how they will suffer. But what you are doing is right, George. It is. Is it? Yes. Is it? Yes, it's the ship. Couldn't they even wait until morning? Oh, no, dear. They will wait. The tide is low now. They cannot get into the harbor until morning. George? Yes, Ruth? Where will my people go? We found a place for them. Vigo and I found a place this afternoon, an island about eight miles from here. It's smaller than this one. Is it? Will they like it? Well, at least it's dry, and there are a few trees. Mm. I hope they can be happy there. And Ruth, you and your father, you'll come to America with me. I can arrange it. I know I can. Yeah, maybe. In time, we can forget. Maybe we'll never be able to, but at least we can try. We can try together, Ruth. I know we can do it, but only if we're together. My darling. The ship had arrived, and the island, which had been the quiet home of a tribe of happy, peaceful people, was no more. It started as simply as that. But soon the place was a riot of noise. Soldiers tumbled off the ship in droves. Bulldozers roared down the gangplanks. Supplies were unloaded. Men, machines. The 20th century, with all its fanfare, had moved in. And one civilization proceeded to destroy another. And that was when the heartbreak procession began. Father Vincent was the first. Ruth was with me when the venerable old priest came hurrying to my side. Major, oh, Major Dodd, I have just returned. I have just learned. Oh, my church, my people, my God. Father, believe me, I'm so sorry. Oh, good heavens, what do they want? Where's Vigo? What? He said they have pulled down his house. Uh, he asks, what is he to do? What's he to do? What am I supposed to answer? Is it my fault? Didn't I try to explain to them? Do they think I wanted to do this thing? Do they think I enjoy it? Do you, Father? Vigo! Vigo! Yes, Major. What are you doing to me? You know the arrangements. You know what I told you. Get those people to the boats. Do you hear me? Get them to the boats. Get them out of here. Yes, Major. Father Vincent, you must believe me. I... I... I understand, my son. I understand. The will of God is worked in many strange ways. I will abide by it. And so will my people. Uh, excuse me, Major Dodd. Yes, Sergeant, what is it? What, would you check this blueprint, sir? The boys are ready to start building. Not now, Sergeant. Don't bother me now. But, Sergeant, sir... Sergeant, I told you, not now. Yes, sir. Father Vincent, I... Ruth, do not worry, Major. You see... My people sail away for their new home. There is a song of sadness on their lips, true. But there is resignation in their hearts. And there is strength in resignation, my son. And now I, too, must be going. Goodbye, Major, and God bless you. Goodbye, Father Vincent. Oh, Ruth, my child, you'd better come now. Your father will be waiting. Huh? Come, uh, my no, child. no, Father Vincent. Ruth's coming with me to America. Uh, he doesn't understand, Ruth. The Padre doesn't understand. Go get your father. Ruth. I'm sorry, my dearest. I cannot go with you. You can't go? I belong here, George. My father and I belong here. The islanders have been good to us. They... They gave us a home, they gave us love, and they gave us laughter. They taught us how to laugh again, George. They took us in when we were lost, and now it's they who need us. We can help them, George. What they are suffering now, we can show them how to bear, because we know. 
George. I am sorry. I cannot go with you. Ruth. Goodbye, my dear. This blueprint, sir. Hmm? What? I'm sorry, sir, but the boys are ready to start building. Now, we've got the material for the machine shop set up at the head of what's going to yeah, be the airstrip. Yes, Sergeant, sure. Go on, put it... Oh, oh no, wait a minute. That's wrong. It goes at the other end. Gee, I'm sorry, sir. Well, never mind being sorry, Sergeant. We haven't got time. We've got a job to do. Now, come on. Let's get to work and study this thing. Yes, sir. You see, according to the maps I've made, the machine shop goes in here, next to the power plant. On the other side of the island, Clifton Fadiman. And that's the end of our story. The story of a lost love and a lost island. As for next week, well, we have a complete change of pace in store for you. Our story concerns the number one contender for the title of hottest spot on the globe. But more about that after you hear a message from the makers of Johnson's Wax. You know, friends, dirt wears things out. You women know that's true. That's one of the reasons you clean your curtains and rugs. One of the reasons you wax your floors. Well, dirt is hard on the finish of your car, too. In fact, some of the dirt and road grime your car picks up has a destructive chemical action on its paint jobs. Don't neglect the finish. Clean and polish it occasionally with Johnson's Car New, the remarkable polish that both cleans and polishes in one application. Besides being easy to use, Car New gives a satin-smooth surface that helps resist dirt. Car New is a liquid, easy to apply, dries to a white powder. When you wipe off that powder, you'll find a sparkling finish you'd almost forgotten. No matter how little you drive your car these days, you still must take care of the paint job. And the easy, inexpensive way to do it is with Johnson's Car New, spelled C-A-R-N-U. And now, Mr. Fadiman, just what is the hottest spot on the globe? Well, I guess there are lots of candidates for the title, Jack, but would you settle for the Balkans? Yes, indeed. Well, next week, our words at war will be taken from Headquarters Budapest, Robert Parker's new book about the Balkans, that boiling stew pot of bribery, espionage, stupidity, and dictatorship. A script chock full of scenes which are absolutely authentic, but which are too incredible ever to find their way into the most comical of operas. So, for the lowdown on Boris of Bulgaria, Beck of Poland, Horty of Hungary, King Carol, and Magda Lupescu, listen in next Tuesday evening to Headquarters Budapest. Now, this is Clifton Fadiman inviting you to be with us again next week. And until then, goodbye. Tonight's dramatization was written by Edith Summer and featured Barry Kroger and Charlotte Holland. Music was composed by Tom Bennett and conducted by Milton Catums. And the entire production was under the direction of Anton M. Leader. Next week, the Johnson Wax Program presents Headquarters Budapest on Words at War. Jack Costello speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm.